Hi, HartfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Wednesday morning, May 11th. Another very nice day headed to the Mid-Atlantic region, the northeastern part of the nation, all thanks to a very strong high pressure system that continues to reside over the northeastern part of the nation, the southeastern part of Canada. In fact, it'll uh, continue to generate some very nice weather conditions on a Thursday as well. After that, the northeastern part of the nation will become quite unsettled. The storm system that went through the Mid-Atlantic region during the past weekend pushed to the western part of the Atlantic Ocean, stalled out, and this same high pressure system that has been resulting in some nice weather over the past few days and the next couple of days will actually help to push this system back to the west so it will reach the southeastern U.S. coastline over the next couple of days and then its moisture field will ride up right along the eastern seaboard causing scattered showers places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, probably Boston as well Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Nothing like last weekend in the northeastern part of the nation or the, more specifically the mid-Atlantic region. It won't be an all-day type of rainfall at all. It'll be uh, quite warm and for the first time this season noticeably more humid, uh, kind of uncomfortable humidity for the really the first time this season. The dew points have been very, very low in much of the northeastern part of the nation during the past several days and really for a lot of the last couple of weeks you'll notice wildfire uh, red flags put out by the National Weather Service and that's all because of a stiff breeze uh, on occasion as well as very low humidity values. Well again that humidity will be more noticeable Friday, Saturday and Sunday and there can be scattered showers maybe a thunderstorm at uh, just about any time in that three-day time period in the mid-Atlantic and the northeastern part of the nation. Before we decipher last night's uh, GFS model run, we're going to take a look at uh, kind of an interesting visible satellite imagery loop. Let's take a look at the temperatures year to date. This goes all the way out to a few days ago from January 1st to May 7th. Uh, the temperature anomaly shown here, and first of all, a little bit above normal for the year from January 1st to early May across the southwestern part of the nation and the southeastern part of the nation including the state of Florida. Those two areas certainly a little bit above normal from January 1st to May 7th. But look at the large portion of the nation here across the heartland and even into the mid-Atlantic and the interior northeast U.S. All this section has either normal or below normal temperature readings so far this year. Again, this is from January 1st to May 7th. The thing that really jumps out at you, the, the uh, far below normal temperatures uh, for um, more than four months, January, February, March, April, into the early part of May, uh, focus over the northern plains. And what's interesting is we talked about this in the tropical outlook, the summertime outlook that's available at uh, arcfieldweather.com. I believe the pattern will tend to flip in the uh, summer months for this particular part of the country. They're well below normal for the first few months of this year. Analog years strongly suggest that it could become a hot and dry type of summer in this same part of the nation. So there will be something interesting to monitor over the next several weeks and a few months indeed. Well, let's start off by looking at the uh, satellite imagery loop This uh, from College of DuPage weather website. Look at the swirl in the atmosphere right here. This is what remains right now from that low pressure area that last week moved from the south central states across the Ohio Valley then across the mid-Atlantic region causing a rainy, chilly a few days, especially Friday and Saturday in the mid-Atlantic region. Then it pushed out over the western Atlantic and grinded to a halt. Here it is spinning this morning with a lot of thunderstorm activity showing up on its eastern flank. This is a, an interesting system. We talked all of last week. A possibility becomes kind of a subtropical system. Takes on more and more in the way of tropical characteristics. It certainly was not at all tropical during the past weekend when it produced a chilly rainfall in the mid-Atlantic region. That high pressure system that has been controlling the weather in the northeastern part of the nation for the last few days will help to steer this system back to the west. It will head towards the Carolina coastline and then kind of dive to the south and west, reaching the southeastern U.S. coastline over the next one to two days. And then that moisture field associated with this 
retrograding low pressure system will ride northward right up along the eastern seaboard causing a shower threat on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the Mid-Atlantic region, in the northeastern part of the nation. It'll stay quite warm. High temperatures all three days probably in the 70s in uh, Philadelphia, D.C., and uh, New York City. For the most part in the 70s for afternoon highs, maybe touching 80 degrees by the time we get to Sunday, places like D.C., for example. And, again, I mentioned earlier, for the first time this season, we'll have some uncomfortable humidity levels as well uh, during the upcoming weekend as this moisture field first backs to the south and west towards the southeast U.S. coastline and then pushes northward right up along the eastern seaboard. Well, let's walk through last night's 6 Z run of the GFS. First, we're looking at the vorticity field, and here we go. This is the uh, vorticity associated with that swirling massive clouds over the western part of the Atlantic Ocean. Watch the movement over the next several hours here. It dives to the south and west. By the time we get to midday on Thursday, it's dropped to the south and west towards the southeastern U.S. coastline. Kind of spins around there for a little bit and then starts to make a move. Here we are now Friday midday and watch it now start to move to the north. The center kind of falls apart but enough moisture will ride up right along the eastern seaboard to cause a, th a shower threat really from Thursday night on through Sunday in the mid-Atlantic region and the northeastern part of the nation. That same moisture field will become increasingly humid. Uh, humidity will become kind of an uncomfortable factor by the time we get to the weekend. Really for the first time this year, temperatures will remain pretty warm with high temperatures generally in the 70s, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the mid-Atlantic and the northeastern part of the nation. Let's go out a little bit farther in time. It tends to finally fall apart as a northern stream system, and basically a cold frontal system, approaches the northeastern quadrant of the nation by the time we get to Sunday night. Uh, there could be another round of showers associated with this system, uh, maybe even into the day on Monday. Well, let's wrap up with the surface forecast maps from the 6Z run of the GFS. Here is the surface low pressure system. It will back to the west and then dive to the southwest and then its moisture field uh, will start to make a move to the north. This is the Friday morning forecast map, that center of low pressure. Not exactly a powerful system, but kind of a widespread moisture field. Here's that center of low pressure by the time we get to Friday morning. And then all of that moisture starts to push to the north. And here we go. We can see the green associated with some rain shower activity. Certainly a thunderstorm uh, cannot be ruled out on Saturday or Sunday in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. And this moisture field just kind of rides up all the way into New England over the upcoming weekend. Not an all-day type of rain, not a washout on any of those three days, but there will be a shower threat Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, scattered showers, and maybe an embedded thunderstorm or two. Let's go all the way out to Sunday morning, and here we go. A little bit more organized of a system by the time we get to Sunday night crossing the Great Lakes. That's that northern stream wave of energy, cold frontal system. That could kind of renew the shower threat in the mid-Atlantic region by the time we get to uh, late Sunday night into Monday morning. On Monday morning, that surface cold frontal system looks like it'll be located right about in this region as well. Pushes off the coast during the day on Monday, and uh, that'll help to cause some clearing uh, by Monday afternoon into Monday evening. So an unsettled weather pattern headed to the mid-Atlantic region, the northeast U.S., for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, shower threat, not an all-day rain on any of those three days. It remains warm, and it'll become noticeably more humid for the first time this season on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. A cold frontal system arrives late Sunday night into early Monday in the northeastern part of the nation. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.